could China have begun its move to not only surpass, but quite literally own America? This is a tweet by a US lawmaker warning about what China is doing in secret and trying to block those efforts. But this has only made China speed up their buying. In 2020 alone, China increased its land ownership in the US by more than 80%, buying up around 352,000 acres. As you will find out in the video, this is just coconuts. Some land owned by China is situated right next to a military site, like one here near Grand Forks Air Force Base in North Dakota. Here it's believed that the land could be used to monitor US Air Force's air traffic and intercept communications. As I will soon cover, this is just one of many examples of extremely alarming purchases that China is making right here in America. It's not just military reasons. China has also been using this global food crisis to buy up one of the most important resources in the world, food. Controlling American food and the food supply is a big reason behind China's land purchases in the USA. They will control us when they control our food supply. I tell people all the time, they're not dummies. Um, you know, they're not just gearing up and strengthening their military and manipulating con currency and stealing our IP. They're also slowly going after our food supply. And that's truly when they control us. So all of this inflation and this bad economic policy allows other countries to strengthen themselves and weakens America. And it will have long lasting effects on us. So it's the family at home and what they can't pay for that they could pay for a year ago. But also it has a long lasting effect in how much it weakens America for the next decade or so, or even in the long term when it strengthens our enemies. So in today's video, I'll answer the questions of how big of a problem China's land acquisition in America really is. I'll discuss what the true motives of the Chinese Communist Party are. And finally, we'll discuss how America is responding to its largest global competitor buying up land in its own backyard. Are US political figures jumping the gun, or has the home of the brave and the land of the free been colored red in none other than the Chinese flag? Let's find out. Around 6.3 million Sri Lankans are facing acute food insecurity. And 20 million people in the region are at risk of severe hunger. Poor nations facing famine for many years. Malnutrition, mass hunger and famine. Things are looking bleak for China's massive agricultural sector. China could be struggling to ensure it has enough food for every citizen. At first, the debate lies in China's monopolization of key industries, such as semiconductors and minerals deemed necessary for major industries globally. Even now, those debates rage hot, but already it seems that China has begun attacking silently and quietly from another angle, land, specifically American farmland. A quick search reveals that in recent years, China has exponentially increased its American land holdings with particular emphasis on arable farmland. In the decade between 2010 and 2020, China, through direct and indirect buying via its partners, increased its agricultural land holdings by nearly 2,500%, resulting in the CCP, through its proxies, owning over 350,000 acres of American soil. To put it in monetary figures, China's land stake in the United States alone is worth well over $1.9 billion. And according to the Agricultural Department, it includes land used for farming, ranching, and forestry. In a previous video by Ray Dalio that I summarized on this channel, I explained how China is America's biggest competitor in this new era. And it's almost shocking how they own such a substantial amount of U.S. soil. One can reasonably argue that part of the reason why China is buying a lot of arable farmland in the United States stems from the fact that China has a large population, and with that comes food crisis concerns. This is a topic I also covered in a previous video that I recommend you watch, but in case you missed it, let me briefly summarize it. Basically, with an ever-growing population and limited agricultural output in its own country due to frequent flooding in key regions, as well as an industrial-oriented population, China is left in a position where food concerns are present. Although they are good on the food front at the moment, famines from the time of Mao haunt China. 
and result in over-the-moon policies to prevent a starvation repeat. This could be the reason why China is gobbling up American agriculture, because they barely have adequate land to feed themselves. And yes, despite having over a billion citizens, the nation has less than 10% of the world's farmable land. So it's a situation of plenty of general lands, yet very little arable land. This is why Beijing has taken to look elsewhere for sources of food, especially meat and other forms of protein. But regardless of its food security situation, China is also making moves to use the food situation to leverage its position on the global scale. This is something that began during the height of the coronavirus pandemic, when China, through its subsidiary companies, bought Smithfield, America's largest pork producer. Through this move, China made sure that it got the pork supply it needed for its citizens, despite American grocery stores running short, and American citizens starving during the pandemic. Despite there being a shortage at home, American resources were serving another nation. By taking land and food processing companies for themselves, China can benefit its people and gain leverage over the United States in one fell swoop. Now that China is amassing large quantities of American land, you know exactly where the produce of that land is going. China. Some extremists might even say that land that is supposed to be used for American profit is going to be used by America's greatest enemy in the new Cold War. Whether you agree or disagree with that kind of language, it's hard to argue against it. Even former Vice President Mike Pence said during a speech at the Conservative Heritage Foundation, America cannot allow China to control our food supply. He then continued, urging President Joe Biden and Congress to end all farm subsidies for land owned by foreign nationals. On the other hand, one can make the argument that China is not the only nation to hold land in the United States. And that is a valid point. However, what stains China's intentions are a few things we'll discuss later on in the video. Not least among them is the fact that China, on top of buying American food producing companies like Smithfields and buying up a lot of arable lands, already harbors a dark, scary secret. Do you want to know what it is? Well, China is currently hoarding over half of the world's grain. Yeah, you heard that right. Half of the world's grain supply. At a time when there is a global shortage of food, China is hoarding up a lot more food than it needs. But why? The world is facing a food crisis that hasn't been seen in at least 50 years. Multiple famines this year. UN's latest report on global hunger. In the face of the looming food crisis. Unprecedented food crisis is engulfing the world. Massive shortage of essential food supplies. China has launched a global hunt for grains. I know you're asking yourself, for a country that is already hoarding half the world's supply of grain, why does it keep expanding its agricultural prowess further? Typically, this would be a hard question to answer, but 2022 has answered it for us through the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Just like Putin is using his vast supply of oil and gas to leverage his position on the negotiation table, President Xi might be considering doing the same. Given the amount of grain that China has and its resources centered around food production and storage, it's not hard to imagine that China could use the restriction of international food supplies to choke concessions from nations regarding certain crucial matters. Say, I don't know, the annexation of Taiwan. I'm not saying this is the reality on the ground, but it's definitely an option on the table. And we would be ignorant to not see that. Even bipartisan lawmakers in the United States recognized the threats with Representative Dan Newhouse warning that the current trend in the U.S. is leading us towards the creation of a Chinese-owned agricultural land monopoly. This has resulted in a committee adopting Newhouse's amendment to the Agriculture FDA spending bill that blocks any new agricultural purchases by companies that the Chinese government owns and bars wholly or partially controlled Chinese-owned farms from tapping federal support programs. However, as bad as a China-induced international famine is, there may also be more to the CCP's agenda regarding its mass purchase of American lands. Let's dig deeper. And this time, it involves the sensitive matter of state security. Your online security is just as important as state security. Various small websites and apps are tracking everything you do. 
Then they sell your data to the highest bidder. This data can end up in the hands of some unsavory buyers. This is where today's sponsor, Atlas VPN, can protect you. Atlas will keep your IP address and search history private, so your data doesn't end up in the wrong hands. On top of this, you can enjoy other benefits like watching region-locked content on streaming sites and actually save money on your flights and vacations if you search from other countries. Best of all, right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just one subscription will work on all your devices and protect you wherever you're surfing the web. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking on the link in the video description below. The House Intelligence Committee says China's Huawei technologies is a threat to U.S. national security. Here. Officer accused of spying on Tibetans for the Republic of China. A Boston University researcher accused of being a secret operative of the Chinese military. New York City Police Department officer has been charged with spying. Suspects Huawei of spying. Spying, hacking, and other covert activity from China. Of all the American attractions throughout the nation, the largely barren, windswept tract of land just north of Grand Forks, North Dakota, seems to be devoid of anything. Despite all this, it has gained attention regarding international espionage. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. International espionage. This comes after three North Dakotans who owned the parcels of land here sold them for millions of dollars to a Chinese conglomerate, Fufeng Group. Chinese food manufacturer purchased more than 300 acres of land just 20 miles from Grand Forks Air Force Base. Based in Shandong, China, its American subsidiary says the company is not a threat. You saw the graphic there, 15 miles away from this, um, from this Air Force Base. I this is Grand Forks Air Force Base in North Dakota, home of some of the nation's most sensitive technology. One in, in North Dakota has some of our most sensitive drone and space technology. The Chinese firm purchased more than 300 acres of land near Grand Forks to start a $700 million corn milling plant. What makes this purchase worrying is the fact that Fufeng Group's land purchase is only about 12 miles away from the Grand Forks Air Force Base. This Air Force Base, one of the most important in the United States, houses important military drone technology, as well as a new space networking center. For America's largest competitor on the global scale to have a foothold in one way or another, barely 12 miles from such an essential military area is a danger in itself. In its May staff research report, the U.S.-China Economic and Security Review Commission cautioned that the Fufeng Group has ties to the Chinese government. Speaking strictly from the strategic vantage point of their new farmland, it's believed that the Chinese could theoretically intercept communications to and from the base, and they could secretly conduct electronic surveillance of the base. This is according to an Air Force officer who raised internal concerns. The Air Force officer specifically pointed out that even if the company's employees did not want to conduct espionage for the Chinese government, Articles 7 and 14 of China's National Intelligence Law of 2017 require every Chinese national or entity to commit acts of espionage if the regime demands. Another memo about the project in April cast it as a national security threat to the United States and alleged that it fits a pattern of Chinese subnational espionage campaigns using commercial economic development projects to get close to Department of Defense installations. The officer who spoke about it, Major Jeremy Fox, argued that the Fufeng project is located on a narrow geographic footprint at which passive receiving equipment could intercept sensitive drone and space-based communications to and from the base. In his memo, he wrote, Some of the most sensitive elements of Grand Forks exist with the digital uplinks and downlinks inherent with unmanned air systems and their interactions with space-based assets. And any such data collection would present a costly national security risk, causing grave damage to the United States' strategic advantages. This means that by allowing the Chinese to own that piece of land, there is so much room for espionage being afforded by the Chinese. China's agents, by buying such strategic land, also show that their intention might not strictly be in farmland but in strategically located portions of land that could allow them military advantages in the United States. 
In this modern era, that is like the US having allowed Russia a missile silo base in Missouri back during the Cold War. It's borderline ridiculous and unheard of, honestly. Some lawmakers see the risk in this base with Senators Mark Rubio, Kevin Kramer, and John Hoven having sent a letter to Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin requesting that the purchase be vetted by the Committee on Foreign Investments in the United States, an interagency government committee charged with overseeing acquisitions of strategic assets in the U.S. by foreign nationals. The debate over the project has split the host community, with emotional city council hearings, local politicians at odds with one another, and neighborhood groups gearing up to block the project. The proposed $700 million plant would create more than 200 direct jobs and other opportunities for logistics, trucking, and other support services. The city mayor is pushing for the project, but he acknowledges that there are national security concerns that are beyond his ability to process as a small-town mayor. It's an only-in-America kind of fight that pits the property and economic rights of community against national security warnings from high-ranking officials in the nation's capital. What makes China's move in the U.S. even more suspicious is the fact that this is not even the first time a Chinese firm with ties to the CCP has attempted this kind of move. Last year, a Chinese billionaire named Sun Quangxin purchased 130,000 acres of land in Valverde County, Texas, very close to Laughlin Air Force Base. His reasons for the purchase of the land was that he wanted to build a wind farm. However, he was stopped when Texas lawmakers passed a law prohibiting foreign nationals from getting access to critical infrastructure. China is buying up some American farmland. On China for buying up American farmland. 300-acre plot next to uh, Laughlin uh, Air Force Base. His name is Sun Guangxin. He's purchasing up 140,000 acres in, in Texas. However, this has not stopped several Chinese companies from buying large swaths of land throughout Oklahoma, properties they turn into cannabis farms. Some companies allegedly then sell cannabis on the black market. As these matters start coming to light, several states are now starting to take action, with both Iowa's and Minnesota's state legislator having already placed certain restrictions on foreign ownership of farmland in their states. Other states are pushing back in their own way, it's a mystery that the United States has been so slow in pushing back against these kinds of actions. The CCP's intentions are pretty clear. This is further backed by the fact that we know that the Chinese government has attempted to spy on the U.S. numerous times. At one point, the Chinese consulate in Houston was closed by former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo after the Chinese attempted to steal U.S. trade secrets and scientific research. There should be no doubt that they are searching for different avenues through which to extract sensitive intelligence from the military. Buying up several strategic parcels of land is just another avenue through which they are exerting their influence. The crisis that faces the uh, property sector in China at the moment. Problems in Chinese property sector will have consequences far and wide. There are enough empty homes in China right now to house about 90 million people. Crisis that began with Evergrande, real estate defaulting last year is now snowballing into a bigger crisis. Chinese citizens have made investments in the company and bought its homes. It remains to be seen how many of them will get the homes that they have been promised. China's purchase of land in the United States is not solely limited to agricultural land either. China and its proxies have also bought an astonishing amount of American real estate. In the decade between 2010 and 2020, the American Realtors Association has estimated that Chinese nationals bought over $200 billion worth of American real estate. This figure is more than any other country in the world. As much as the motivations for this might not be crystal clear, China's 300,000-plus residential purchases in the United States since 2010 pose an unknown national security danger. On top of that, the above market price payments for the homes fuel the rising cost of living in places like California, where a disproportionate number of Chinese nationals buy it. It seems that, for once, both parties in America conclusively agree that allowing China to purchase American land is a lose-lose proposition at this point. A Cold War is not just brewing. American citizens are right in the middle of it. The tensions between China and the United States are high, 
even more now in the light of the Taiwan situation. For America to allow its greatest competitor to purchase land is a scary possibility. Only time will tell how this matter will unravel and if indeed Chinese influence will take root on American soil. In the meantime, I'm eager to know what the American populace thinks of this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you.